But uh, let's start uh, this afternoon with Mohamed Eild's presentation. Uh, all right, so uh, let me... Uh, uh, this is a joint work with Alp Shimshek, and the title is Durability, Deadline and Election Effects in Bargaining. So as you can see, this will be a bargaining paper. And there are several effects here that we are talking about. So deadline effect is something very common in bargaining where people wait until deadline to settle. Election effect is also very common in politics where uh, we don't pass laws before the elections and then you pass after the elections. And uh, in this paper we show that these are quite closely related and they are all different instances of something we call durability effect. Basically that shows that uh, when the bargaining power becomes durable, this entices the players to wait until that moment. Okay, so uh, let me start with my, my motivation. So the first one is about deadline effect. So uh, in bargaining, the negotiators wait near until near deadline to settle. This is called the de deadline effect. And examples, in experiments, they wait until the last second. Like these are like, like you know, one minute experiment, they come last second and they try to uh, bid in the last second. In uh, labor negotiations, uh, they negotiate in the last hour. So there's, you know, like tomorrow there will be a strike, they don't negotiate all those weeks, but then the, the night before that they are like uh, stopping the clock and negotiating to cut a deal. In um, uh, pre-trial negotiations, in United States only 5% of the cases go to actually court, 95% are settled, and in those 95% settlement, actually uh, they don't uh, agree ahead of time, they agree on the step of court house and so you know we knew these things as you know people who know bargaining we knew these facts uh, but then in the last two, two years Americans also like ordinary Americans learned these facts very well the reason is uh, there were a lot of like high-level negotiations between Republicans and Democrats and they all were like led to crisis the one of the crises was called debt ceiling crisis in this one Treasury uh, wa uh, de declared that they were going to go de on default uh, if they don't get money by August 3rd of 2011. So government had to raise the limit for that ceiling so that they could borrow. Otherwise they would go on bankrupt. It would be the first time in United States history that they would go bankrupt. And But somehow like Tea Party Republicans didn't want to uh, do that. So there were, there was these negotiations. As you can see, finally they reached an agreement on July 31st, and they passed the law, a law on August 2, so that you know they wouldn't go bankrupt on August 3. Of course, still uh, they, U.S. Uh, credit rating went down just because of this thing. <laughs> All right, and then. There was next year in 2012. There was this fiscal cliff crisis. Basically, Bush tax cuts were gonna disappear on the new, new Year Eve, and uh, and there were these negotiations. They kept negotiating until the New Year Eve that night, uh, and then they finally settled on New Year Eve, and next day, basically the New Year, and then actually the Obama signed the law on. January 2nd, this is before the market started because they were afraid that if they didn't pass the law, markets would collapse by this thing. So, this goes on. on. One thing is, as you can see in these things, deadlines are also very stochastic things here. Like, it's not that, oh, there's something. So, here in experiments, yes, there is some five seconds, but you don't know whether you, how much your time with your action is going to take. But when you look at here, for example, this, the, that ceiling, it's like when, the, when they run out of the money. This is just a number, August 3, but it might go to August 4, maybe even, you know, like uh, September 4. We don't know when the money ends, so that's the deadline. It's a very stochastic thing. We don't know when it's going to end. 
also the, the, these things are like that. For example, in pre-trial negotiations, this is when judge or the jury reaches a decision. You don't know when they are going to reach a decision. You are just waiting. Okay, so it's a stochastic thing. Good. So my second slide is going to be about something that seems to be somewhat different. This is uh, politics. In politics, basically newly elected presidents pass many laws in their agenda. The first hundred days is very important, they will say, okay? So if you pass them, you pass them. If you didn't, probably you won't. And, but also there is another thing that mm, there is often political gridlock before the elections. So if there is going to be election in November, in August, in April, people are not going to pass laws. You are not going to be able to do anything. Okay, so we will call this election effect. The example, for example, one uh, example is the following. Repub uh, in 1999, this was Clinton era, there was huge surplus, and they were expecting a lot of surplus too, and Republicans offered some tax cuts. Uh, Clinton rejected because he wanted to negotiate a better tax cut, different tax cut. But the re Republicans didn't negotiate after that because they were hoping that in 2000 they will elect a president, the Republican president, and they will pass a better tax cut. And that's what happened. George W. Bush was elected, and then he really, really passed the, one of the mo probably the most major tax cuts in the history, and it was you know tilted towards Republicans. So this, this, obviously this is an anecdote, but actually we have also data for this. Where is the data? Oh, here we go. So this is basically, politicians actually studies this a lot. This is from a man who wrote a book about this thing, and this data my co-author picked from them, uh, that book, and we looked at it. Uh, so this shows the following. For, you know, in the United States, we have congressional elections every two years and presidential elections every four years. So for any president, you can think about the first two years, one Congress, second two years, uh, another Congress, third and fourth. Goes like that, here there's another election. No, 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 this is like first two years here and second two years here, and there will be a presidential election here. As you can see, uh, and then these guys measure the important laws passed in each Congress. And then when you look at the first two years, there were 13.6 or 13.7 number on average. But second two years, only 10.2, 10.3 passed, low passed. This is like significant in 90% but insignificant in 5%, but 95%, but you know, you think about, we have very few data here, okay? So, still, but you can see that this is 25% less than this. So there's a big jump between those two. And so, in fact, uh, I'm gonna show you another picture. When, I, when we looked at this picture, and we, our theory also suggests the following, this is putting a lot of data in together, but let's separate, because in the United States there are term limits. It goes all the way, you know, you can be re-elected, but you cannot be re-elected after that. So we put this first year or two years of a president, second two years of a president, third two years of a president, and fourth two years of a president. When you see, you see what's happening. So the largest one actually is in the first year of a newly elected president, and it goes down in the midterm, after the midterm election, and he gain some political capital again, and then it goes down all the way to nine. When you look at 14 versus nine, it's huge. So these guys are lame duck, okay? So this is um, a data that we found. So basically this shows that somehow, uh, in uh, this data that shows that before the elections, people don't pass laws. There's a political gridlock, and after the election, you, you overcome that. Even here, you see that, you know, like just right after the election, it changes. Okay, so this is the second one that was election effect. The third one is about the durability of bargaining power. We, what we are going to do, we are going to connect these two seemingly distinct things through something we will call durability. Okay, one second. Okay, so in real life, 
uh, bargaining power of individuals or parties are actually durable in the sense that it's continuous. It doesn't jump from one moment to other. So, but it's a stochastic. It changes uh, as time passes. It changes randomly, but it changes like in a very continuous way. And also, uh, its durability sometimes. Uh, changes in expected ways. For example, before the election, the bargaining power is not so durable. After the election, it's very durable because this guy is going to be in the in that seat for the next four years. You have to, you know, do that. So, yeah, so in theory, however, this is in reality. In theory, bargaining power is often modeled as probability of making an offer or making an offer. Because why? When you make an offer, the other guy can only say yes or no. You are making a take it or leave it offer. So for that moment, that party has all the bargaining power. And then sometimes you might say, okay, I'm going to use probability to make it a bit softer. So, and in of course, this is uh, the way I think about bargaining, but People usually use that probability of making an offer. They think that it's a pro protocol, but the protocols they take usually assume that this bargaining power is highly transient, okay, non-durable. Huh? Think about Rubinstein's alternating offer bargaining. What, how do you offer? I offer today, tomorrow you offer, the day after I offer, and so on. It goes back and forth. What does it mean when, especially, we would like to take this discount factor going to one continuous time limit? What's happening? In one instant, one party has all the bargaining power. In next instance, the other guy has all the bargaining power. This makes it very non-transient. Or you could think about uh, another one, random proposal model. If you take that, you know, making an offer as the bargaining power, random proposer also says that in with independence, it says that tomorrow's bargaining power is unrelated to today's bargaining power. Again, it makes it non-transient. Or you can think about, you know, the probability of making an offer. In that case, bargaining power is constant, it's not changing, or something like that. All right. So what we do, okay. And then the, this last ingredient of our model, optimism. Well, basically, uh, in, or in bargaining literature, uh, in experimental stuff, etc., they report that you know excessive optimism is common in bargaining. So you know you ask, what's the problem that judge is gonna uh, go with you, and you say two thirds, and the other guy also says two thirds. They add up to more than one, one, right? So it's, there's some optimism, and people think that this is a main source of delay and disagreement in bargaining. Let me give you an example here. That example I gave you, uh, this Clinton versus Republicans in 1999. Here, example says that Republicans didn't negotiate on tax cuts in 1999 with Clinton in the hopes that they would get a better uh, tax cut from uh, a possibly a Republican president like George W. Bush. This is like we took that sentence from some political scientists. When you think about it, this doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because think, this is Clinton's last chance in his legacy to pass another major law and write his name there. So if they agreed about the probability of uh, Republican versus Democrat president being elected, so there would be an expectation, some continuation value. And Clinton would like to actually agree something more Republican than that so that he, he would put his name on it. And then, yes, we, uh, we would see, you know, like Clinton would, uh, you know, this makes, you know, Clinton lame duck, but being lame duck also allows him to be, you know, like a lame duck president also pass a law, but except that it would be against his interests. It won't be as good as he would have if he had po po political capital. But in this case, they didn't do that. They actually waited. They waited means that actually it, uh, perhaps Republicans had higher expectations about uh, having a Republican president and in comparison to Clinton's view. Clinton thought that the, the Gore maybe may, could pull, out, you know, pull that thing. All right. So this is the optimism. So what we do in this paper, we develop a model of bargaining with possibly durable bargaining power and also uh, we allow optimism and stochastic deadlines. In fact, all these three are important in, in the, for the theory at that. 
we show that the deadline and election effects are two sides of the same coin. Uh, basically, they are instances of the rubulet effect. It says that rubulet effect is that if the rubulet is expected to increase at some t star, then there is a period of disagreement before t star. All right. Uh, so basically, in the deadline, durability increases because of the deadline. When there's a stochastic deadline approaching, that means that we are stretching the time, right? Because think about like if there's a 10% of uh, end the game ending, you know, think about like 99% of the probability actually the game is gonna end one minute later. For you, that one minute is an age. It's like, you know, with years and years of discounting. That way, what happens, that, uh, deadlines make the, uh, stretches the time and makes the uh, bargaining power more durable. And basically, this is an instance of that durability effect. So before the deadline, that's why we are, actually, we have this long period. Elections, on the other hand, what it, the election does, just before the election, durability drops, dips, and then, so at that moment, there's a long jump in the election we are foreseeing, but that thing also leads to long delay, much before that thing dip happens. Okay, so that's basically the key. We'll see, I'm gonna show you in examples. And then, then what we do, we relate the size of the deadline election effects to level of optimism, durability of bargaining power, and hazard rate of deadline, etc. All right. How much? What? Oh, okay, good, I have a lot of time. I just wanna, yeah, okay, so 310, okay, good. 330, I guess that, good. Um, so, let me give you some brief literature review. Um, so, there's an applied, sizable, uh, sizable applied and empirical literature on optimism and bargaining. I'm not going to, uh, you know, say that, but I have a survey article on that if you want to read. Uh, so, and then uh, before, in my dissertation, I developed this dynamic models of bargaining with optimism, durability, so these are those things here basically in fact you know it shows that the optimism doesn't necessarily lead to delay and then here it says that learning in combined with learning it leads to delay because of persuasion effect and this one uh, here i try to study uh, deadline effects with optimism with basically what i was showing with uh, if the deadline is not stochastic, then you would have a deadline effect, but if there was a little bit noise, it would disappear. And I thought that mathematically it was interesting, but obviously people thought, well, most deadlines are stochastic, so what are you talking about? I never published that, and then with uh, Alp, we basically, we took, we took that little note, and then actually we brought much different paper. All right, so, so these are the thing. So on deadline effect, there's an experimental lit an empirical literature on that. For, for example, this paper, 1988 uh, paper with Al Roth and his co-authors in AR, basically they got, these guys were running bargaining experiments for years and years. They were looking, trying to test different bargaining theories, but at the end they realized that there's only one thing that was common in all of their bargaining. Deadline effect. <laughs> they just discovered <laughs> that there's deadline effect. Okay, so then they wrote this paper, and this paper probably is more better known than all the other papers they wrote in the meantime that they wanted to write. And then Roth and Oakenfels have another paper about why deadline effect in eBay auctions and so on. And there are also uh, there's a you know the other empirical literature on uh, deadline effect in uh, uh, you know law and economics. In theoretical uh, literature, Catherine Spire had an, was an MIT graduate student at the time and wrote in her dissertation, she showed that deadline effect, she had an example that illustrated that deadline effect can come out of uh, bargaining with incomplete information. Mine, mine, they just made up a game to make it look like deadline effect. There is a new uh, paper, uh, Jack Fanning from NYU, she, he just started in uh, Brown, he has a beautiful paper that shows that actually 
if you take Ebru Gül model, deadline effect just comes as a linear equation from that model. It's beautiful. So, and it's, yeah, that's a very good paper. And then, so these are the theoretical ones. Election effect, there's a, Mayhu is the guy, he's at Yale on this thing, I found him, and then so we got data from him, we wrote, and then the binder wrote another book, and there are books on these things. Theoretically, Ortner has another paper, he's at BU from Princeton, uh, he basically, he also has a theory uh, similar to ours, uh, but different, but he talks about election effects, he shows that he has, his theory is based on passing laws to the effects, the probability of winning or losing, that's how, why you get this uh, gridlock. But you can test, obviously, those things. And then, the, our model will be continuous time bargaining, so there is, Ortner is continuous time, Ambrose and Lou has another continuous time bargaining paper. Alright, so this is what, uh, the literature. So, let me talk about the model. Good. So, uh, we consider two risk neutral players. They are trying to d uh, divide a dollar, and x is the share of player one, one minus x is the share of the player two. That will be their utility. And time is continuous, so that's like not like typical bargaining model that we are doing now. So, the time is continuous. Payoffs from striking a deal at time t is e to the minus rt times x, and for player 1, e to the minus rt times 1 minus x for player 2, so r is your uh, discount factor. Uh, the, although the time is continuous, they can strike a deal only on like, you know, like certain di discrete times, like 0 at 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, we are going to let n go to infinity. All right. So far, it's like bargaining, but what's going to happen? Oh, this is also different from typical bargaining. Uh, so now I'm going to define deadline. Deadline, we are going to deadline as a stochastic thing. So it's a R plus valued random variable D with CDF capital F and PDF little f. So randomly it arrives. When it arrives, uh, basically after D arrives, then it gets zero and uh, the bargaining ends. So if you agreed before, then you agreed. Okay, so it's a random variable. All right, so this is key. Let's look at the effect of having a stochastic deadline. When you look at the effective discount, discount rate of uh, at time t, it's like this r plus the hazard rate of deadline. All right, so that's what I mean by why, why deadlines are equivalent to making uh, this bargaining power more durable because deadlines are precisely equivalent to making the time pass longer and if you had a uh, continuous function if you stretched it it would look durable right <laughs> that's the key so it's I wish I did that here okay so in effective and you can see that delta ts the t discount factor between t and s is like this and then you take derivative and you get that okay good uh, so, so far, this is somewhat more new than you know usual. But our main, more new, newer, new things are gonna come next. So this is where we are gonna define things somewhat different than uh, literature. So we define bargaining power of a player i as an exogenous continuous time stochastic process, pi t i. And this is exogenously given to us, and it's independent of how frequently these people are making offers. All right. Good. And uh, and also um, we are gonna uh, this you know like Rubinstein's bargain would be like so fast that this doesn't have any limit, right? In the limit, here we are gonna make it like almost surely continuous time paths, piecewise continuous time paths. All right. Uh, oh, oh, so and then there will be some states of space omega, and they will uh, those numbers are adding up to one. And the key assumption here is that at time t, uh, it, uh, each person's bargaining power is common knowledge. We know how the bar what the bargaining powers were in the past, but we don't know what the bargaining powers will be in the future. Okay. The game is as follows. We are going to define, make this bargaining power as follows. Player i is recognized as the proposer with probability pi ti. 
recognized player offers some X, and if the other player accepts the offer, then the game ends when picking X. Otherwise, the game continues to the next period, unless there is a deadline arrival, in which case the game ends and the player gets zero. Okay? So basically, you know, original one, we were like making more philosophical point without games, etc. But we were seeing that the second then, and eventually we thought, okay, this is actually we are uh, analyzing yet another, when you think about it, yet another random proposal model, but it's more general. And also, when we take the discard, you know, like continuous time limit, we are not playing with that process. In the other one, you would play with that. Okay, that's the key. Uh, the, no one? Yes, uh, yeah, obviously, yeah. So we could have just put all the way in the F. But yeah, so but sometimes we want to put, okay, let's get some deadline. <laughs> yeah, you are right. Okay. Uh, but we are going to make some comparative statics and so on. We start subgame perfect equilibrium of the scale. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, also, uh, you really responded to this. Uh, also, this uh, sounds familiar to him, too, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, we have uh, possibly non common priors. This will be where we will add optimism. Um, priors on P1 and P2 on Omega, which is about the bargaining powers. So, Players have common view about the deadline, how the deadline is coming, but they have subjective view about how the bargaining power is going to evolve. We are going to write ETI is expectation operator of I at T. We define optimism at time T about sometimes S as follows. We write YTS equal to, this is the amount of optimism, Let's write the second, let's look at the second line. Second line is much, makes much more sense. Take a player I, ask him what's your expected value of your bargaining power at time S. He tells you this. You turn to the other guy J, his opponent, he says, what is the probability, your expectation of your opponent's expected uh, present value, uh, bargaining power at time S, opponent also makes a, a, another expectation. If they had common prior, this would be zero. We look at my own expectation of my bargaining power minus my opponent's expectation of my bargaining power. This is clearly the level of optimism. Okay? And then you can write this symmetric like this, showing that this doesn't matter which player you are doing, you will get always the same result. So that's why it's called optimism, without, rather than putting things. All right, so you add them up. Each person's own expectation and subtract minus, this measures the level of optimism. Good? So uh, let me tell you, if you, in, a st in a standard model, this would be always zero, because you would be assuming common prior. But we, are, we don't have common prior, that's why it could be positive or negative. And we, let me first, there are some basic results that says that you could actually um, solve this using, there's a unique solution, and the unique solution is uh, continuation value is given according to this equation, but the key here is the following. You take a person, uh, you ask uh, player one, his expected value share waiting one more period, player two's own expectation of player one more period, that gives you a number, that's WTA1N. If this number is greater than one, then you cannot make these people agree because they, each of them, you know, like their sum of what they want is more than one, and you have only one. And if it's less than one, then you can agree. So agreement definitely if this is less than or equal to one. Okay, that's the, that's how this agreement happens in this model. Okay, and then if you had common prior, if you had a standard model, actually we have a very nice solution, very simple solution, basically present value of future bargaining, rents that you will extract, etc. Alright, so what I'm going to do next, okay, good, I'm going to present some uh, Poisson model, some uh, more s simpler model that's much easier to analyze, and I'll illustrate everything on that model, although we have more general results in the paper. Okay? In this one, 
Uh, so we assume that there is some awesome process with arrival rate lambda, and at each arrival, a new pair of bargaining power is uh, selected, and this bargaining power remains constant until the next arrival. So basically, bargaining power constant until some extraordinary event happens. When that happens, we, uh, we reshuffle the deck. Okay. Uh, and this is from a fixed distribution, uh, and uh, like that. Okay. Let's write pi bar i for the expected value of player, uh, um, you know, pi i according to player i after when there is a reshuffling. Okay. We are going to write y bar, this plus this minus this, for the long run optimism. This is how much they are optimistic if condition on things being reshuffled. Okay. So how would you talk about durability of bargaining power here? Durability here is how often that arrival happens, it gives you variability. One over that rate gives you durability. So one over lambda is the durability of bargaining power. Measures durability of bargaining power. But what we want to do, we want to actually talk about, it turns out that this is the key, this becomes the key. Effective durability rate, which is effective discount rate divided by lambda. Okay, this includes the you know effects of uh, um, deadlines, etc. Too. So that will be key. Okay. Okay. And expected bargaining power is something like this. You know, like uh, as time passes for go forward, there's more. Uh, it's less like that. You have the current bargaining power, but when there's a new bargaining power, your expectation is this. And then what's the optimism? Optimism becomes, you add those things up and subtract one, you get this. 1 minus exponential times y bar. So what does it mean? At the current moment, if you ask my, our opinion about what happens tomorrow, we have very much similar views and level of optimism is nearly zero. But as time passes, it gets larger and larger and in the limit it converges to y bar. It's a very nicely increasing bargaining power, which actually makes a lot of sense, right? Good. And then we basically um, first show this thing, and then you can show it. Uh, we have a unique solution, we found a unique solution, and unique solution, assuming that this row is constant, your ex share in agreement is a convex combination of your uh, current bargaining power and your long-term bargaining power. Okay. And, but the key here is the ratio, the way, you know, if you take, divide this k with L, you get rho. When rho is high, you put a lot of weight on your current bargaining power. When rho is low, you put a lot of, very little weight on your bargaining power. But also, you, there is y bar here uh, at the bottom. This, the reason is, although we both agree what this number is, we have very dif different numbers for this. We have this agreement, so we add to add up to one, actually we put this. So in general, optimism of your opponent always hurts you. That's why you get that number, like that. All right, so this is the model. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to play, you know, like some simple examples. I'm gonna show you why this, this model will lead you, uh, you know, the deadline and uh, effect and all those effects. Okay, so this is the picture for deadline and durability effect. Let's fix T star. After T star, that effective uh, durability rate is rho 1, which is R1 hat divided by lambda 1. This is one parameter specification. But before T star, this rho is a smaller number. R hat zero, lambda zero, like that. So these are constants, okay? These are all constants I just picked. We picked so that this is larger than this. So basically, effective durability rate remains constant, slow at some t until t star. At t star, it jumps up and remains constant after that. All right. So, so how can you solve? I already solved from here on, and I'm going to show you that there will be delay here. That's the next slide. Basically, assume that rho one is greater than rho zero significantly enough so that when you multiply this congruence parameter, this is the weight of the current bargaining power, uh, multiplied by y bar, that will be greater than rho zero. 
Okay, this is important because this measures the share of amount of optimism uh, about long run optimism uh, after at T star about your own share because that K affects that way. All right. So what we show, suppose that it's like that, it jumps up, then players disagree on an interval, t star minus delta bar divided by r0, uh, t star, and agree at time t star. And uh, at, t star, at t star and thereafter. So basically what happens here, there's some period here, they wait, they, agree, they would have agreed here, but if you, they come here, then they are gonna disagree, 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 and agree here like in that line effect, okay? If that W, if the game starts here, it will be, you are waiting until you start and you are agreeing that. And then this, the length of that period is given like this. Uh, basically, it's, uh, as you can see, basically, uh, the reason I wrote this way, this is the, X, you know, like, uh, this is discount, due, the amount due to discounting, and this is the amount of optimism, basically. All right. So I'm not gonna, uh, Three minutes? Okay, good. So let me tell you what the, the durability, why this is durability effect. If I took R constant, if you, if I just increased the one over lambda at that T star, I would get durability effect, durability increased. On the other hand, if I kept the lambda constant, and but I done some deadline started arriving, then what would happen then uh, with some exponential rate alpha, then deadline, uh, then row one would become something like this, R plus alpha divided by lambda one, so it would increase. So deadline effect and durability effect are the same thing. All right. Uh, so then we do all these things about, we relate them to, you know, how that size depends on the other things. Uh, but uh, given that we don't have time, let me go to election effect. Election effect is like this. I can model election as uh, so there's an election at T star, bargaining power is constant at row zero, high all around, but there's a small time where bargaining power dips, okay? Uh, no, bargaining, durability. Durability is constant all around, and here durability dips because there's an election. All right. And so we, we make, uh, we write it this way. Uh, this lambda, okay, so it goes like that. It, no, lambda obviously jumps up at that, uh, in that period and lambda zero otherwise. And then we take epsilon zero. But there, there will be this term, e to the minus lambda prime, lambda, that lambda i, that will be called incumbent effect because it's probably that you will survive the election. And then we show that, in fact, that's what happens. Uh, you know, there, like, uh, this epsilon is very small. But since there is dip here, so he, from here to here, there is a big jump. Because of that jump, then all of a sudden there is a long period of here where disagreement. Okay, so there is disagreement from here to here. And then we measure that size. That's what it happens. And then one thing that I would like to emphasize is obviously it's always, in, this thing is always is increasing with optimism level. Another thing that's basically this effect is a decreasing in the incumbents effect. So if, the, in, if there's a lot of incumbents, you cannot have a lot of optimism because that's disciplines. Okay? So that's what it is, etc. There are all these things. And this brings me to this picture. The picture, look at the, what happened here. Here there's learn term limit. There's no incumbency. And there's a huge uh, election effect. Here, there is an uh, incumbent is rerunning. So there is an incumbent effect, but that effect is not that large, as you can see. You should measure this versus the, this versus this versus that, okay? So you will see that one, it goes 9 to 14, the other guy, one goes 11 to 13. This will be my, uh, I, uh, this will be the opposite if you had like somehow like you thought you, I'm gonna affect the elections. Okay, how many minutes do I have? Zero. Okay, good. Uh, so deadline effect is prevalent in bargaining. Uh, election effect is common in politics. And 
We developed a model of bargaining with possibly durable bargaining power. We showed the deadline and election effects are two sides of the same coin. They are all instances of a durability effect. If the durability expected to increase, then there will be a long period of delay, and they, these things relate to other things. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Philippe Asha is going to discuss the paper. Thank you. Uh, I thank Umberto and Vinicius for the invitation. So I started with a caveat. I'm not a bargaining theorist. And so I actually started to, uh, I tried to bargain my way out of that and I failed. <laughs> so, so what I'll do is I'll try to present an outsider's perspective on the paper. I'll try to show a little bit. Kind of the, the, the earlier setup of the paper is fairly simple. So uh, I won't try to simplify much. I'll try to offer a new perspective on how they, they show the results. And then towards the end, I'll conclude with a few questions that I wanted to ask. Uh, okay, so, so the main motivation of the paper is that you see a lot of uh, last-minute agreements when you look at empirical uh, bargaining. So, and, and, and one of the reasons that people in the literature have pointed out for that is that people have self-serving biases. So people would tend to think that they are going to be able to, in the future, reach better bargaining positions than they have in the present. And how can this uh, self-serving bias generate a delay is that Potentially, if I receive an offer today, I might think that in the future I have a better bargaining position, so I might not be willing to take that offer today. And the sender might also not be willing to offer me something, a reduced offer, because uh, reduced from his side, because the sender also thinks that she's going to be able to find a better bargaining situation in the future. So you can see how this could generate potential delays, and the literature started with some very simple examples of that. And Muhammad has a very interesting paper from 2003 in which he shows that under very mild conditions, this kind of argument breaks down. So what he shows in that paper is that discounting undoes much of what disagreement can do. And the point about discounting is that we cannot disagree for too long. Because with a fixed discounting, if we disagree for too long, what's going to happen is that our payoffs are going to get arbitrarily small. So we should, if, if we expect to disagree for too long, we should agree now. So that kind of, so that's one, that's the main feature and one of the things I'm going, going to try to emphasize is that discounting undoes uh, disagreement in these settings. Okay, so, so the paper has two very simple, very nice examples. So the two examples are, one is about the deadline effect. And the idea of the deadline effect is, imagine that I think that I'm going to get a very good uh, condition for, for the bargaining process for a while, and you also think the same. But at some point, at some fixed deadline, we know that the game is going to end. So basically, if we don't reach an agreement by that deadline, the payoffs are zero. So the payoffs are as good as some payoffs at plus infinity to me. Because I, so, so basically, what this deadline is doing is it's discounting, discounting very strongly these pay payoffs, and we should reach kind of an agreement at that deadline at that deadline, even if we disagree for a while. And, and the second example that they have in the paper, which is uh, novel, is that also they show that if we expect the bargaining conditions to stay the same after this deadline, so that is not like payoffs jump to zero, but I expect to get a fixed share of the payoff. If I expect to get a fixed share of the surplus, that's going to deliver the same kind of result. And so the intuition is that in their setup, and that's one of the innovations here, agents know the present. They know how well they are capable of bargaining in the, in the present. They know their bargaining powers today. So they do not disagree about the present. And if the environment is very persistent, the future looks very much like the present. So there is very little scope for optimism and for delays. Okay, so let me kind of give you a brief overview of the setup. So, so there's a, a part of the setup that's very standard. So totally standard bargaining. Two players, they're both risk neutral, they discount the future at some exponential rate, and there's a fixed unit of surplus to be split between these two agents. And so, as before, there's also a proposer that's recognized with some probability. And so this is the notion of bargaining power. And and they look, so basically it's a continuous time model, but they look at a, a discretized version in which agents may basically make alternating offers in, this, uh, in, in, a, in a grid. So basically you, you, in, at any point in the grid, you're going to choose randomly one of the players to, to, to make this uh, take it or leave it offer. But what's new here? What are they actually introducing relative to the textbook bargaining uh, 
part. So one is that the idea is that the bargaining power is, is continuous from the right. So basically that the bargaining power is a stochastic process and it might jump sometimes, but it in, in general says uh, it is a continuous process. And that bargaining power is learned contemporaneously, so that's important. People know their current bargaining positions and they don't disagree about that. So they, they know the present. And but they might, so there's no objective probability for, for the evolution of the stochastic process, so they might disagree about it, their future bargaining posi positions. And, and given that this is true, they might expect their shares of the surplus to, when added up, to, when added up together, to sum to more than one. So this is going to be their notion of optimism. Another element that's new in the model is that there's a deadline which is not deterministic as in the examples, but this deadline arrives with some hazard rate. And this hazard rate is really important because it modifies the relevant discount factor. So this is, so stationary is going to be important in, in, in what I'm going to uh, argue later. And this, the arrival of this deadline is really important for breaking stationarity. And and they look at the results as n goes to infinity, so they look at some continuous time limit of this model. Okay, so, so what, they sh what they start with, and it is a very interesting, very tractable model, is they start with a, with a Poisson setup. So everything has constant hazard rates in that setup. And there are two important arrival rates there. So one of these arrival rates is the arrival rate of the deadline itself, which is this alpha. So the, this that this is going to change the relevant discount factor. And another important hazard rate is a hazard rate of a resetting process. So this resetting process is the one that changes and shuffles around the, the bargaining powers of the two agents. So once you see this Poisson shock, this colorful fairy that comes and, and hits people with, with the reset of the bargaining powers, then they are going to, to to take new draws out of some distribution that they don't know what each agent has subjective beliefs about what this uh, what this distribution is and given the research these two agents might be actually optimistic so they might expect their own bargaining shares to when added up to exceed one so so what's really interesting in this setup is that you can look so basically you have a notion of optimism for the present that is based sorry for for optimism upon a reset, that's the sum of the two expected bargaining shares. And if you look at the future, what's happening in the future is that the, the optimism for any moment in the future is going to be a weighted sum of the optimism relative to the present, which is zero, the agents know the present, plus the optimism relative to a reset that might occur in between these two dates. Uh, so what's interesting here is that their lambda is related directly to the durability concept. So a very high lambda means that this causal fairy comes and the bargaining powers are reset very frequently. So very high lambda is going to mean that you're going to put a very high weight into the optimism term. And very low lambda is going to mean that it, this can get arbitrarily close to zero. So if, if the environment is very unstable, very non-durable, non what's going to happen is that the effects of optimism are going to disappear. Okay. Uh, okay. So another key uh, key thing that they show in this Poisson model is that uh, the the key parameter is this uh, effective durability rate, and you can see that here you have two key parameters entering, and they enter in ways that they can sort of neutralize each other. So for any increase in alpha, you could also find an increase in lambda that undoes it. And this is one of the points of the paper that deadlines and durability, and sort of this resetting of the bargaining powers, they work in very similar ways. Uh, so, but somewhat surprisingly or not, they still offer a negative result for the baseline Poisson model. So the baseline Poisson model is too kind of, uh, is too stationary. And as a stationary model, it will not be able to generate disagreement. So even with optimism, even with some durability that you could make arbitrarily small, you still get immediate agreement in the setup. And, and you can see that basically, if you take this durability to infinity, and you can reach that by both changing the, the arrival rate of the, of the reshuffling ferry or to have the deadline arriving more frequently. If you take this to infinity, you have that they are bargaining exactly as they would be in the absence of optimism. So what, 
what they actually do in a very ingenious way is then they use this uh, the stationary model and they paste different moments of uh, for this parameter role they paste together different setups so this is kind of a very common uh, uh, approach when you want to illustrate some some things in, in, in macro for instance and so this is and, and and they basically use this for showing two effects that how much time do I have little okay so so I'll, I'll just quickly mention what 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 the effects are one is that if you expect like either alpha to go up or lambda to go down at any moment in the future this can generate sort of a shadow of disagreement so agents can disagree if they expect durability to to go up suddenly and also an election no matter how small this is no matter how small this epsilon is the election because it's going to imply some increase in dur durability later can also generate some periods of of delay and and something like a deadline effect so let me jump to actually my what my comments are so so first is like overall it is a very nice paper really enjoyed reading it and so it the important thing is that it, it introduces this concept of durability by looking at this uh, stochastic process for the bargaining powers and and it shows that deadlines and durabilities and durability work in very similar ways and so so a few questions okay so a few questions came to my mind is that first I was wondering in, in a setup where they have introduced this uh, the stochastic process for the bargaining power where there could be like an option value causing delay there and, and they have a read and corollary in their main theorem which actually says that if people have uh, have a common prior about how the bargaining powers evolve they cannot disagree so there's no option value sorry leading to delays and and, and for at least for an outsider I found that somewhat surprising and interesting and that's very uh, hidden there and and but another question sort of from somebody outside this literature is once we open the Pandora Pandora box of of leaving the common prior assumption agents can disagree about a lot of things and and the literature has taken the root of looking at optimism and disagreement about current bargaining powers but maybe and, and it would be interesting to know whether disagreement about other fundamentals of the setup could also lead to delays so a natural question would be to think whether like disagreements about the deadlines or the evolution of the surplus or outside options and volatility could also generate uh, potential delays and, and Muhammad has some of this in the, in, the, in, in the 2003 paper and might be interesting to revisit some of this and so in another question that came to my mind is that they, they show here that optimism uh, associated with deadlines can or any sort of form of non-stationarity can generate delays in the deadline effect and there are some other stories in the literature which can also generate delays and once you have delays you can always add some like some change in the arrival rate of the deadline and cause a deadline effect so the question that uh, came to my mind is can we think maybe uh, empirically is there a way to potentially disentangle the known mechanisms for delay and deadline effects so one very no well-known mechanism would be a volatility in the surplus so volatility in the surplus can cause delay and if you play with a with a rival rate of the deadline you can also generate a deadline effect and asymmetric information can generate incentives to try to screen out the other agent and that creates delays and if the game expires with some probability that also creates a deadline effect and and or, uh, Juan Ordner has this paper about also the cost of making concessions close to, a, to an election that's also known in the literature to, to potentially create a deadline effect so the question is is more like can we potentially disentangle the predictions of these different mechanisms and and the last was kind of a more cheap comment I'll leave it for later <laughs> okay uh, just one question if you, you have some from the audience otherwise you want to react to, to some comments yeah they, are, they all you know like are worthwhile problems and yeah especially the last one electoral cost of cons you know we could put those two together and then study and see and then look at empirically you know that's why i was putting that you know 
empirical data to show that maybe it's going to optimism, but you are right. Asymmetric information and deadline, you know, I think Jack Fanning does a great job, but doesn't have optimism, that's right. And yeah, volatility and surplus plus deadline. Yeah, you would think that it should go other way around. You know, when you put deadline, delay should be less because there it, delay comes from waiting for a better option and, you know, deadline is decreasing that. Yeah, so I think 